for revenues. $23 million. That is nothing. So today I am continuing the series on Palantir's investments, where I go through their equity investments, learn what the company does, and determine if it's going to be profitable for Palantir and ultimately the shareholders. I've uh, done the research on Black Sky, Lilium, Rovit, and Sarcos Robotics, and I've already done other videos on Cellularity, Faraday Future, and Astrocast. So I'll put the link to those videos in the description or in the video. Uh, so make sure to check those out if you haven't already. So uh, without further ado, let's get going on Black Sky. Now, Black Sky, what they do is they essentially put up satellites in space and they provide customers almost real time imagery uh, and they provide customers with analytics and uh, data on a fully vertical uh, basis, which means if you want to take pictures or want to be signaled or know anything about a certain location, all you have to do is go on your app, notify Black Sky, and Black Sky will process your order and focus on that area for you and start giving you insights. Uh, you do not have to wait for a, a satellite imagery company to take those pictures and then send them to a data analytics company, which processes it and then feeds it to you or an analyst to give you that information. It's going to be fully integrated uh, from top to bottom, which is uh, very important in this industry because you know, if you're needing satellite imagery, then that means you're doing something very important, whether it's, you know, uh, military operations, uh, global monitoring or environmental monitoring, or trying to locate an asset or, uh, you know, a liability like a wildfire somewhere in the forest or something so that means timely information is super important so what i did here was i went through their investor deck i took a lot of screenshots that i thought were pertinent and that would help people understand what black sky does but before we get into it i think it would be good to see what how the ceo of black sky explains what uh, how he perceives black sky to be so uh, let's go through that right now. What do you think the killer app could be? I think what's going to be interesting is we'll have the ability to monitor the Earth in almost near real time, which means we will understand what goes on in most, some of the most important places around the world continuously, which is going to mean we understand what normal is and abnormal, which is going to get us into a world of predictive analytics. We're going to be able to understand when things are changing and then how to respond to those changes in a way that, that helps a range of new uh, industries as well as you know, humankind. And so, and so getting the images with that new level of frequency that it's true real-time, virtual real-time monitoring, you're launching 16 satellites to do that. How does that come together? The, the company is about five years into building this constellation. We've had about 200 million of investment to build not only the spacecraft, but an entire uh, AI machine learning processing system and and a cloud computing environment to distribute the data worldwide. And it's a point and shoot technology. Flying overhead, program it to take a shot of something specific and repeat that. They're almost like flying webcams. You you basically they they're up on these satellites and you can from your browser tell it where you want to take a picture and it will steer the satellite, take the picture and send it back to you and get it back in your inbox on your on your phone or on your PC. And who are kind of the early adopters do you see of this of this kind of data? Obviously there's a lot of applications in the government. We've been doing work with immigration. A lot of that is trying to figure out where might some of these uh, groups be assembling and do they have enough resources and where might they be going next? So there's a lot of organizations working on that problem. Um, another area is in illegal and unregulated fishing. It's it's a multi-billion dollar problem for the global economy so that was a good uh a good uh explanation uh i also remember another very interesting video they do not explicitly state that it's related to black sky but volunteer put out a, a a real use case video where they talk about satellite imagery and being able to make quick decisions based on these satellite imageries 
So uh, this is a video that was shared, you know, a while back on June 8th, 2021. But I thought it was a great uh, eye opener as to how Black Sky could be providing uh, services in the future. And I think they already are to some government organizations. So let's look at that. As a notional example, an escalation could start with something as simple as the Chinese military conducting a routine exercise in the South China Sea. To see the full picture and make tactical, operational, and strategic decisions, the U.S. and Allied forces rely on Palantir. Monitoring the exercise, AI models running on satellite data detect an increased level of military activity. To the north, ship detection models identify an alarming buildup of fishing vessels surrounding a major Taiwanese port. An activity model detects that many of those ships are tied together, suggesting an ulterior motive and increasing the risk of a blockade. The U.S. maintains a national interest in free trade throughout the South China Sea. And as an island only 90 miles off the coast of mainland China, Taiwan is especially reliant on freedom of navigation through international waters. This free trade is particularly critical given that Taiwan produces 80% of the world's semiconductors. The device you're watching this on today almost certainly relies on these parts. Any disruption could be disastrous. So as the team watches closely with partner nations, a new alert comes in from Japanese intelligence. The Chinese Luyang destroyer has gone dark and isn't showing up on intelligence feeds. The ship had previously been docked at a southern naval base, but AI models detect that it's now missing. Gotham fuses data from multiple sources to project likely paths for the Luyang. The most dangerous routes head east, towards both the military exercise and the mounting tensions outside the Taiwanese port. The analyst identifies a key fork to monitor between the routes. To collect more imagery, machine learning models built by academic and commercial partners run on data across all domains. See those uh, commercial partners, I truly believe would qualify as Black Sky but it hasn't been explicitly mentioned, but I think it is Black Sky, if I had to make an educated guess, but I'll turn out speculation. The models determine that satellite coverage alone is not enough to find the ship. Based on what is capable and ready, the system recommends a few alternatives. The best option is an aircraft from Okinawa. Before finalizing the selection, analysts deploy the latest micro models, trained to avoid incoming threats, identify military equipment, and detect military ships. The unmanned aircraft receives its mission and prepares for takeoff. Time is ticking, and they need to find the ship quickly. As the aircraft departs, video streams back to headquarters in real time. A ship identification model detects the dimensions, speed, and weapon system of the destroyer headed north. An analyst back in the operations center verifies the detection which confirms the Luyang is on the most dangerous path and is only a few hours away from the potential blockade. The commander is briefed on the fast developing situation and examines several human and machine generated courses of action that have been jointly tested and developed in past exercises and simulations. The first option involves sending reinforcements to a nearby base, which may take too long. The second option is to send a manned aircraft over the fishing vessels which could introduce unnecessary risk. The third option is a freedom of navigation operation, which means positioning an American or allied ship closer to the developing situation. This option appears to have the highest probability of success with the lowest risk. Joint forces decide to task an American ship. Once the choice is selected, a task order is submitted and the American ship quickly alters course. The team watches closely as the operation progresses. And as the American ship approaches, the fishing vessel blockade begins to disband, and the Lu Yang continues north without incident. So, I mean, look, this is, that was a great video. I absolutely do see a, uh, a synergy or a, a connection here between Black Sky and Palantir, uh, which could be uh, you know, profitable for Palantir and its customers.
who need quick decision-making uh, data insights. So uh, these slides that I was talking to you about before, so this one was an interesting slide where they give explicitly mentioned the partnership between Black Sky and Palantir. So Black Sky and Palantir collaboration aids government agencies in predicting events. You were just watching a predicting scenario. Uh, Black Sky also secures investment from Palantir and enters into a multi-year strategic partnership. Here they plan to deliver real-time actionable intelligence for defense and intelligence customers, integrate Black Sky imagery and analytics directly into Foundry. Palantir users can access Black Sky tax tasking and analytics on demand through Foundry. Opportunity to accelerate and expand U.S. and international data and uh, insights go to market strategy. A collaboration with Black Sky radically compresses the decision chain for warfighters. Shyam Sankar, COO, Palantir Technologies. So clearly there's a link there. It, they don't explicitly state it, but if you had to make bets, I would bet that uh, they're related. Black Sky Investment Highlights. First mover, they have a proprietary AI-driven SaaS platform and space network. So what they're saying, a lot of uh, fancy words here, but what they're saying is, you know, they have a software as a service subscription model for the Black Sky satellite imagery and data analytics, and people can subscribe to a model and each model offers different types of services to the point where you can have 15 minute updates or, you know, updates twice a day or updates uh you know once a week type of thing and all of those have different price points this is a 40 billion total addressable market uh, according to uh, black sky they say that they're a disruptor in a large and expanding market opportunity and expansion intuitive SaaS experience with affordable data and analytics such as addressing pent-up market demand um, wide moat because they're fully operational uh, vertically integrated sp space and SaaS infrastructure they have a 2.5 billion pipeline, 80% uh, gross margins. I guess once they scale up their ops. So this is the market today. They say like, okay, it's highly fragmented data providers, software providers, consultants, the analyst who works with all of that and then gives that to the end user. Here they're saying Black Sky directly to end user. So they win. So then here they get into a bit more detail saying, okay, well, you know, you see the space data, it's collected by a bunch of different companies. Then the analytics is done by a bunch of different companies, volunteers here, consultant and experts. These guys interpreted the data, then they feed the analyst who feeds the end user. So uh, this is a uh, complicated situation, as you see. And what they're really trying to stress, Black Sky, when they say they're fully vertically integrated, is that you see here the space data team, they can only do two parts of the full equation. The consultants only do one part. The analytics is only done by one part, but Black Sky offers everything. So they have the satellites, so they can revisit as much as you want. They have the design and manufacturing of the satellites in the sky. They collect the data and then they have a software platform to integrate all of this so this this shows a lot uh to us and you know eventually this is how they see the world where they have about uh, i believe it was 60 satellites in the sky being able to provide back-to-back -back, uh data satellite imagery so now let's get into the uh the, the details the weeds um where it's the time check 15 minutes okay well it's a lot of fluff for the first 15 minutes but it was a nice walk through understanding so black sky ticker bksy on the new york stock exchange they went publicly they went public on the 10th of september last time i checked they were trading at 449 volunteer is down 4 million on that investment as uh, as of right now as of the uh yeah as of last friday uh, now, they're headquartered in Philadelphia, USA. They were founded in 2015 with business plans, and then the satellites were launched, and they started commercial operations in 2019. They're in the aerospace industry. Uh, company vision is not really listed on the website. How will they change the world? Uh, the overall vibe I was getting was that they want to provide seamless vertical satellite imagery, insight, and analytics to allow end users to quickly make critical decisions at a more cost-effective manner. 
what critics are saying is that legacy providers, this is actually me, legacy providers like Maxar and Airbus, they can they have the capital to put up a fight, keep this market share. They already control the most critical components, which is having a satellites in the having satellites in the sky. Uh, the fact that you know to get the data and to create a software to integrate what's being captured by the satellites doesn't seem like a big ask. It seems like a, a competent team can get it done within 12 months. So for Black Sky to continuously tout, you know, like oh yeah, we're fully they're first fully vertically integrated, like. If they start stealing customers, I'm almost positive that Airbus is going to uh, strike back. So this is something, you know, we need to be mindful of. The total entrustable market, they say it's $40 billion. This is what Black Sky says, based on intelligence, construction, insurance, utilities, and environmental reasons. Because all of these industries have a use case for this. Now, if we look at the financial results, nine months results for the third quarter, September 30th, 2021. They have 198 million in cash, total assets of 324, liabilities 171. So obviously, you know they're a good, they have a good balance sheet because uh, assets exceed uh, liabilities. So revenues, 23 million dollars. That is nothing. That is peanuts for me. For a company that started in 2015, got the satellites uh, built in the sky. It's 2022 now, January 3rd, 2022. They only have 12 satellites in the sky and uh, they only made 23 million, like not too impressive. From that 23 million, 7 million was from analytics, so imagery, so obje object detection, site monitoring and enhanced analytics, uh, looking for, you know, detect detecting pattern of life changes. Uh, 1 million was from imagery. Uh, so, and the rest were all from engineering services. So, eight million out of the twenty-three was from the satellite-related uh, activities. The remaining fifteen were engineering. Not the satellite operations haven't really ramped up. It seems because right now the majority of revenues are still from engineering services to other companies. Operating income a loss of eighty-eight million. Net income a loss of two hundred fifty-one. And that's because of the bridge notes or the debt that got uh, converted to shares and 28 million stock based comp. Now, Palantir's investment is $8 million. How can Palantir profit? They do have that $8 million equity stake, which technically they're down 4 million on right now. But I mean, that's unrealized gains. It doesn't matter unless you sell. Uh, they have a foundry service agreement for $8 million. So one for one. And they have synergies with Palantir customers. So there's the Spectra AI that's integrated into Foundry already. So that's the image capturing uh, service that's offered through Black Sky, uh, which can be used by customers across, you know, utilities, uh, you know, monitoring for, you know, unregulated fishing, which is a big problem, environment, military intelligence, global monitoring. And, uh, you know, there might be even some cross cross sale opportunities between Astrocast customers and Black Sky because Astrocast allows communication between a remote asset and a base a headquarters for control operations. And Black Sky allows imagery of remote assets anywhere in the world. So there is definitely an opportunity for Astrocast customers to be interested in Black Sky uh, services and vice versa. Now, in the uh, financials, I was able to see that uh, they mentioned Palantir Technologies is a strategic partner. They have a multi-year software, software subscription agreement for 8 million. So it's not really clear because they only paid 375 uh, for nine months ended. So I really do think it's a $8 million deal uh, but it's not clear for over how many years or for what the period is. If it's a 400k a year, then obviously that's it's a ridiculous deal because <laughs> if it's 400k a year, then it's gonna take 20 years to burn down this eight million dollars. But uh, but that's the deal we have, and we don't have any further details on it.
So what else do we have in terms of news? In terms of news, uh, we do have Black Sky Secures Investment from Palantir. It was announced on the 1st of September. Then, you know, we see that Black Sky was awarded a five-year a five year $30 million deal. We have NASA taps Black Sky for rapid revisit satellite image data. So, you know, they, they have a lot of credibility, Black Sky, with government organizations. They are using them. Uh, Black Sky's newest satellite completes commissioning, enters revenue generating operation within 18 hours. That was on the 13th of December. So that it's, it's really plug and play once the satellites are in the sky. They can turn and start generating revenues within 24 hours. So, so that's great news. Uh, Black Sky expands global reseller network in Australia with Geo Image on the 21st of December. So there's a, you know, a lot of news here. You know, if you want, I can put up the links to these news or I can give you the IR link and you can go through it. Have fun. Uh, the CEO, CFO and CTO. Uh, I think we could just take a look at the CEO. Simple things. So as we see here, the CEO was... What did he do in the past? Okay, he was in GE Aerospace for nine years, so almost 10 years. Then he worked at uh, Amherst Systems, uh, a lot of physics, uh, you know, related stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh, director of Washington Operations, so develop uh, investment and growth strategies, president and co-founder of IT Spatial. So 3D mapping technology for defense intelligence, homeland security. So you definitely have some contacts. Overwatch systems, uh, product for the $50 million geospatial business unit, and GTO at GOI. So, you know, yes, he, he you could tell he's close to this spatial aerospace industry. Uh, and he might, he may be, you know, very well fit to lead to this, the, the, the company and help them uh, get forward uh, the CFO and uh, CTO I did look at them you know there's nothing exciting there to ma mention so if you want you can look at them at your own time uh, other points so based on the 2018 uh, Amazon warehouse web services uh, ser uh, presentation uh, you could tell that black sky is 100% addicted to Amazon Web Services. Uh, I watched the video and it was kind of like, you know, this guy presenting here, he was simping over Amazon nonstop the whole time, uh, which was, uh, you know, kind of funny to watch. But, uh, you know, it, you see the value added uh, service by Amazon Web Service. And don't forget, Amazon Web Service and Palantir, they're partners. And I asked myself, is this how the two made the connections? But like, let's watch a little bit of a, of a small video where the, the speaker adds some color to what Black Sky does back in 2018. So, uh, you know, I thought it was relevant, so I saved it. But the Let's watch it. Are the events that the system is scoring and thresholding, uh, providing better geo uh, precision and accuracy to, and saying, hey, analyst, hey, operator, hey, business leader, you need to pay attention to this. This is happening in the proximity of a place that you care about. So I'll give you a couple examples of that. Uh, we basically take the world's data and we try to sort and organize it in near real time into different thematic, what we call channels. So it's almost like you get the sports package and inside of it you can watch football or hockey, right? So we kind of do the same thing. We say we have a whole collection of events related to crime or geopolitical conflict or environmental uh, danger, humanitarian refugee, uh, new construction, uh, and particularly around industries like energy or oil and gas. Um, Within those channel topics, you can select the programming that you care about. So maybe I care about geopolitical conflict as a channel, but what I want to focus on is the Turkish incursion into the Afrin area of Syria. And I can tune that dial down and have that as a very specific feed of information flowing to me across all of these different data sources. Anyways, I'll share the video because uh, this guy keeps going, uh, going and going. But uh, what you can see, though, is that there's a lot of data here. And uh, what Palantir Foundry does is it does integrate this Spectra AI, you know, the, the, the software that Black Sky has to, to put their satellite imagery with related news. But then Palantir is able to take all of that and combine it with a variety of data sources that the client 
uses that their end client leverages and puts it all together to help client make the best decision like we saw in the south china sea simulation video so for me uh you know when i look through the financials i mean i've already summarized it at the top uh there's the the path to profitability for black sky i feel like it's at risk in the sense that uh these advantages that they say they have like you know, gathering data and creating a, a, a software i feel like a company like airbus can do that on a whim like on a whim uh, because they've already done it with palantir for their entire operations so if they wanted to just expand and vertically go downwards to give the full experience to the customers and take black sky out of the equation they can easily do it so having said that i do see a need for black sky uh there are a lot of smaller providers who probably can't afford to deal with airbus and black sky may be a, a a niche provider or an op can offer these services to a small large uh, enterprise or government body whereas airbus may cater to a much more bigger organization um, so when i wanted to make my conclusion here on black sky i looked at is it innovative you know it's gonna do any good for this world and it, it is it's clearly going to allow people to do global monitoring look at where assets are going look at how the environmental situation is uh, evolving and uh, allow people to make quick and effective decisions uh, are they profitable today absolutely not they're really far away from being profitable uh you know 88 million dollar loss uh but i think they're going to be ramping up their operations even their revenues it's all largely engineering services so not really based on their satellites yet so i wasn't impressed there uh the risk versus reward is that worth it for palantir i think it is given the fact that you know it was an eight million dollar investment they say that the uh, tam is 40 billion dollars if i'm not mistaken is that what we said over here 40 billion uh the fact that you know these industries are industries that palantir is already involved in there's going to be a lot of cross uh selling opportunities and more ways for palantir to offer uh value to their customers and to have them stick around with palantir because they have this ai spectra they have black sky satellite imagery already integrated so because of that, I think the risk versus reward is absolutely uh, worth it. Um, so given all three of these factors, I do think it's a win. Uh, only time will tell within the next uh, few years if uh, Black Sky can wrap up their revenues. I mean, their operating income was $88 million. Uh, it, it's not, it's, they're not that far from being able to break even and start generating profits. This net income loss or this net loss is largely due to going public and you know the the versions of notes and shares and the stock-based compensation that all happened because of that event of going public but it's not going to be recurring uh, so my takeaway would be that black sky is a win i'm on the fence but it's a win and i'm excited to see how this develops going forward so uh, that's it for me on Black Sky. Now, if you like what you saw and, you know, you appreciate the content that I'm putting out, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And uh, I look forward to continuing this series. I do have Lilium, Royvent, and Sarcos. These ones are actually pretty exciting companies. So if you want to see what I have to say about them, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.